Hello everyone, amateur meteorologist. First in weather here, it is August 17th, 2020, and the long-awaited uh, period of above-average tropical activity has arrived, along with the climatological peak of hurricane season. In fact, uh, this sudden increase in wave activity and invest uh, formation has actually occurred a couple of days earlier than expected. Uh, in my earlier videos, uh, you might recall I said that we would start to see this activity ramp up around the August 18th or 19th period, but we, it is already August 17th. And we have two invests in the Atlantic Ocean, 97L and 98L, so definitely a lot to talk about, uh, and things are about to get very interesting. So let's dive right into it. First off, let's start with the GEFS Ensemble. This is the uh, 200 millibar velocity potential. As you can see, we still do have sinking motion over Africa, but that has not stopped the uh, development of these waves. Uh, to move off the coast and really start to take shape. And this general rising motion that is going to expand over the Atlantic Ocean by the 18th is really uh, going to help these systems to sustain themselves and to develop and strengthen. This is regardless of other factors such as wind shear. Uh, but in general, uh, th there's going to be broad rising motion going on in the tropical Atlantic, which will definitely lead to an increase of tropical activity. And... Uh, Definitely means that people in the United States uh, and the Caribbean need to pay attention to whatever is going to happen over the next uh, couple of weeks. Now, if we go look at the M MJO, you can see the MJO was in the, the 8 and neutral phase and also phase 5, which does sort of uh, suppress tropical activity in the Atlantic. But now it's starting to enter phases 1, 2, and eventually 3, which are very ideal uh, for tropical activity and which will definitely help... Uh, sort of instigate new uh, waves and tropical systems. So again, this is all coinciding with the uh, velocity potential sliding to the east with the MJO activity, uh, increasing the likelihood of tropical storm development in the Atlantic. So all, everything is sort of coming together along with the peak of uh, the climatological peak of hurricane season. So things are definitely lining up, and I think we are going to have a very, very active uh, next two weeks at least, if not month. Uh, in terms of tropical activity. Now, if we switch to the official NOAA five-day uh, outlook, you can see we have two invests right now. We have Invest 97L in orange, which has a 50% chance of development through the next five days, and Invest 98L, which has a 70% chance of development in the next five days. Uh, Invest 97L is going to have a bit of a harder time developing as it's going to be fighting wind shear and some dry air, especially as it goes just north of South America. While 98L... Uh, will not have as hard a time. It, of course, it will be other, fighting other things too, uh, such as a strong high-pressure system to its north, uh, and also uh, as it makes that northwesterly turn into slightly cooler waters, waters. But again, this one does look more promising in terms of development. Now, one thing I want to look at first off is the uh, ensembles. Try to get a look at what the pattern is going to be in general over the next few days and how this will impact whatever systems we do see develop. So the first thing that really pops out to you is this big expansive ridge. Uh, it's essentially spanning all the way from uh, just the eastern part of the Atlantic all the way to the west, and this was really going to help to prevent these systems from making that essential northeasterly turn that helps to protect, essentially, the United States and Caribbean. And this broad area of high pressure could not come at a worse time because of this ramp up in activity that we're seeing. So... This is bad news for people who do not want to get affected or do not ha or who do not want to be under a higher risk for uh, tropical storm activity, uh, which I think is pretty much everyone. And as you can see with this big expansive ridge, those systems are really going to be forced to keep on making that westward and then eventual northeasterly turn. But by the time that happens, it will be too late. So uh, areas essentially in this uh, red circle right here, I think, are at a much higher risk over the next uh, couple of weeks as that broad area of high pressure uh, is going to stay in place according to the European Ensemble. Uh, as you can see, it really just keeps that high pressure there. This is August 17th, which is today. Then we take it further into August 21st. That, that high pressure system actually expands a little bit further to the west, and you start to see more ridging in the central and western Atlantic. And So again, this is really going to uh, help promote those systems to not make that northeasterly turn, which is bad news for people uh, who want to uh, sort of have more of a fish hook type of scenario where the systems curve out to sea. Unfortunately, that is not looking too likely uh, the way this uh, setup is going on currently. Same thing with the GFS ensemble or the GEFS. 
uh, that high pressure is expansive and in the center part of the Atlantic, which is really going to help keep these systems down south. Uh, if we take this through, you can see that that only continues. Uh, if we look at August 25th, the GEFS ensemble does actually want to take it a bit further to the east, but look at this. Expansive ridge. Uh, you can see it's having influence all the way in the western Atlantic, so that is definitely very concerning. Uh, uh, essentially, if you want, if you wanted those fish hook storms, I went out to see you. We want that high pressure being weak and focused in the eastern part of the Atlantic. But as you can see, it is expansive, it is healthy, and it is strong. So I'm definitely very concerned that if we do see uh, the formation or strengthening of these invests, that they will most likely impact the Caribbean. And so that's why I do feel like the Caribbean needs to be on high alert, especially over the next couple of weeks. Also, the United States, if you are living in the southeast, uh, pay attention to the weather. Don't I don't think it's time for concern yet because we don't really know how these systems are going to form. But again, just stay tuned because things are really looking uh, quite interesting over the next couple of weeks. Now, if we switch to some of the ensemble plot, or actually, wait, let's go to the uh, sea surface temperature anomaly first. What I do want to highlight is the wave, uh, where the waves really form and move westward. Sea surface temperature anomalies are above average, already in one of the warmest areas of the uh, warmest ocean zones of the, uh, of the globe. If we look at the Gulf of Mexico, above average uh, sea surface anomalies. Same thing in the Atlantic. Same thing in the Caribbean. So this is not looking good uh, for people who do not want impacts. Again, so... When these systems come off and when they start to make their uh, westward and northwesterly tracks, they are going to be encountering some very warm waters, which will only help to fuel them and to strengthen them, which is definitely not good news. Now, if we look at some of the ensemble tracks, this is for 98L. Again, take this with a grain of salt. This is not a forecast. This is just what the models are saying right now. These, there is extreme room for error. So right now, the forecast cone is basically from here all the way to here. So this system can pretty much go anywhere right now. It's too far out. We're beyond uh, six, seven days, which at that time, these sort of track ensemble tracks are very inaccurate. And you can see that in the models. There's a very wide spread. You have systems here all the way to here. So again, this is not to be trusted, but what is what, what this is useful because you can see that what the general pattern is. And as you can see, these models are all highlighting that suppressed system because of that expansive ridge. It cannot go out to sea. So I think we can pretty much rule that out right now with the system going out to sea because of that very strong ridge. So I think the Caribbean needs to be on high alert right now, and the United States needs to be concerned and watchful. But not at this point, I do not think it is time to really panic and become concerned because, again, there's a lot of room for change. Uh, and the system might not even strengthen like it's supposed to. It might run into a lot of shear, and it might really not make... Uh, that much of an impact on the Caribbean and the United States. But I'm saying that if it does strengthen, if it does turn into a tropical storm or hurricane, it is very unlikely this will turn out to sea because of that very strong uh, Bermuda, uh, Bermuda high. Now, here is the uh, C or GEPS tracks for 98L. And as you can see, it has a very different solution. It actually turns the system out to sea, which I disagree with. But I just, I just, I'm putting this out there to show you that there's still very large disagreement uh, in the models. Now, finally, for 97L, uh, some models, again, very widespread. You have systems, some models paint, uh, putting the system all the way over here or all the way out to sea. So again, I, I don't think the out to sea option is really likely, but I think this system also has a much lower chance of really strengthening uh, because of that dry air and that wind shear, which it, it will encounter. Uh, but again, I think the Caribbean, especially right now, needs to stay on the lookout and be vigilant for potential impacts. And finally, here are some other model tracks uh, for 97L. As you can see, it is likely going to keep on going uh, westward for the next coming days. Now, again, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Overall, I want what I want you to take from this video is that things are about to become very active, and you're about to see me posting a lot of videos in the next uh, few days. So especially if you're in the Caribbean, stay alert. Uh, keep in mind that things are about to turn very active. And for the United States, I would just say this, that... Uh, there is potential that we could see some impacts from any any number of systems over the next couple of weeks and a few weeks with the uh, MJO turning into phases one, two, and three, uh, the velocity potentials rising in the uh, Central Atlantic. So I definitely think the next couple of weeks are definitely going to be uh, pretty interesting. So stay tuned, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.